dark side of humanity. In 1979, the then unknown performance artist Marina Abramovich staged one of the most memorable, talked about, and perhaps the most terrifying performances in the history of the performing arts. In this performance, which she called Rhythm Zero, what she did was actually very simple, standing still where she was. In addition to this, he placed many different items and materials on a table, which was left to the choice of those who came to watch the show. And there were all kinds of random items on this table, from flowers to chocolate cake, from chains to knives. There was even a bullet and a gun on the table. So visitors had a choice between good and bad. During the whole show, the woman would remain passive, just like an inanimate object. Her aim was to impose herself as a living work of art. However, she had no idea that this six-hour performance experiment would turn into one of the scariest days of her life. At first, the audience was very kind and well-intentioned. Some gave her roses from the table, some fed her cake, some stroked her hair and shook hands with her. However, as time passed and the performance went on, the color of the work began to change. First, one of the audience members gave her a light slap. Realizing that Abramovich was indeed not reacting at all, some in the audience began to hit her harder, and the people who had just shaken her hand and handed her roses became violent when they realized that they were dealing with a truly defenseless person. One of the people in the crowd took a gun and put it to the woman's forehead. He then gave it to her and placed it in such a way that she could put it against her neck. Some of them started writing on her forehead and neck with pens. After that, sexual harassment began, some squeezing the woman's buttocks and breasts, some kissing her, some licking her and spitting on her. Finally, the crowd tore the woman's clothes off with scissors, leaving her naked. One of them scratched her stomach with a knife, and the others, emboldened by this, followed her. After tearing off her clothes, they started scratching her all over with knives and stabbing her indiscriminately, even sucking her blood after scratching her neck and making her bleed. After that, they carried the woman around like a lifeless mannequin, while a man from the crowd tried to rape her by laying her on a table, which they repeatedly harassed. Afterwards, the crowd gave up on this idea after a few people with common sense prevented it, and they started taking nude photos of the woman and handing some of them to her. By this time, the woman was in tears, but the crowd insisted on treating her as an object. Despite the brutalizing majority, a group of people in the crowd became disturbed by this situation, but they dared not take any action. Until a woman emerged from the crowd, wiped away Abramovich's tears, and hugged him. Following her, the minority of people who were disturbed by what had been done to the artist took him into a circle of protection, put his clothes back on, covered the wound on his neck, taped other bleeding parts of his body, and offered him cigarettes. This event, which turned out to be more of a social experiment than a piece of performance art, demonstrated what happens when the majority can easily bring out the worst in each other by taking courage from each other. But the well-intentioned people who are disturbed by this situation cannot show the same courage of solidarity or are too late to do so. When Abramovich started to move again at the end of the performance, the crowd fled as if confronted with something horrible. The crowd was horrified that the person they had just tortured without hesitation was acting as an individual again, 